Hi, and welcome to the Desert Lady Diaries podcast, a weekly conversation with women who found their home in the Mojave Desert. I'm Dawn Davis, and this is episode 119. If you'd like more information about the podcast, it's all at the website desertladydiaries.com, and I invite you to engage with the guests, with other listeners, or me on social media, on Facebook and Instagram at Desert Lady Diaries, or on Twitter at Desert Lady Diary. Hello, and Happy New Year. Welcome back to Desert Lady Diaries. So... It's been really hard for me to get back into a groove. I don't know about you, but those midweek holidays were really calendar and schedule altering. So many things had to be rearranged. Other things just kind of fell off the table. And then it snowed. So that added another layer of strangeness to the whole two-week holiday period. But over and above that, it was wonderful. I was able to spend Christmas with friends, and New Year's was actually just me at home. There was something that I was going to go to, but because of the snow, and it was going to be out in Pioneer Town, they got a lot more snow down there, or up there, I should say, than we did down here in downtown Joshua Tree. And there were some concerns about people being able to make it to the venue and uh, the temperature, so they decided to cancel. So I have a bunch of SAG screeners that I've needed to get through anyway. So I decided it was frozen pizza and champagne (laughs) for the night. And that's basically how I spent my New Year's. The shop was open on New Year's Day, and I did have some folks come through. But it was light enough that I decided to close early, about 3 o'clock. And then I rode out to 29 Palms, and I went into the park entrance there and drove through the park. It wasn't as dramatic snow-wise as it would have been if I had gone earlier in the week, but as happens here, um, when people find out the park, it looks as beautiful as it does, they come in droves, and there were people everywhere, even when I went at 3 o'clock on New Year's Day. So the light was lovely, and I got some good photos. So I was glad that I did that and just took that time to just drive through and start the New Year off in the park. The shop, as I said, has been going really well. I've had a lot of visitors from Canada, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Norway. Where was that other one? I think it was New Zealand. So we truly are an international destination, and I'm finding that out more and more firsthand by asking folks when they come in the shop if they're local or visiting, where they're visiting from, how long they're staying and uh, what their first impressions are. And everybody, of course, thinks it's an amazing place. So we know that, right? So trying to get back to the podcast with the midweek holidays happening, people unavailable for interviews, and then trying to kind of reshuffle my schedule based on the hours that I'm at the shop. And then it's not only the hours that I'm at the shop, I try and do as much for the shop that I can while I'm in the shop. So that I try and do, but there are some things that I need to do when I come home or on other off days when I've got time to do some research on things like that. But otherwise, it's going really well. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on in this episode, which obviously does not have an interview happening (laughs) because it's been really hard to try and book people. I've had a couple people that are just getting back and they said, oh, later in January or I've called and they've unfortunately had some health issues with a family member. Hopefully by next to the next episode, I will definitely be having a guest. Now, just as a reminder, we are going to every other week. So let me just take a quick look at the calendar while I'm here in the booth, because if I put this out on the 14th, that means the next episode will be the 28th of January. So I just wanted to remind you that, yes, I am definitely going to an every other week format this year, which means that over the course of the year, there will only be 23 interviews because typically I do take that break between the middle of December and it looks like the middle of January. (laughs) I have also taken a look at my list of ladies and about two months ago, someone reached out to me and suggested someone for an interview, and I put them on my list. Unfortunately, about a week and a half ago, she passed away. So that got me thinking that I need to make interviewing the elders 
on the list a priority. So with the exception of a couple of folks that I've reached out to and will definitely be scheduling, I would say expect the remainder of the year to be pretty historical. Something else I'm going to be changing up a little bit is going to be how those four questions at the end of the episode are selected to become the exclusive content for the Patreon supporters. It was very interesting to note, and I haven't done like an analysis, but just based on my observation at each interview, it was interesting that people kind of go for the same numbers. So what I did is I got some little, I wouldn't call them poker chips, but they're smaller than that, maybe the size of like a bingo card marker, and I've actually numbered them, and they will be in a jar So there will be a new sound. You'll hear them shaking up in the jar. And there's one number on each side. So I'll have the person pull two of those little chips out of the jar. And I think that'll make it a little more random and toss up the questions a little bit more. And if you are looking for Desert Lady Diaries merch, I was down a path probably in September or October where I was on a tear to find a really good provider for that. And I needed to change up my logo just size dimension wise. I'm not good at that kind of stuff. So I farmed that out to my friend Kimberly Sakura, who was kind enough to do that. And I just have not had an opportunity to get back in that site and start to develop what the offerings might be. But I haven't forgotten. So if you are one of the folks who is interested in merch from Desert Lady Diaries, I have stickers and buttons down at the shop. But other than that, it's just going to be when I can get to it. But It hasn't been forgotten. It is in the works. And speaking of the store, I wanted to mention that I have quite a bit of merch in the store that is from women who have been on this podcast. So I kind of wanted to give you an idea of whose work is in the store, what it is, and maybe you're interested in coming down and buying it. Or I'm also going to tell you the episode number that they are so that if you did buy something from them in the shop, you can go out and listen to their episode and find a little bit more out about the artist. Faith Chinook was episode number 50. And she and her husband are the founders of the Adobe Collective. And she talks about why the name the Adobe Collective came to be in the episode. And they just dropped their newest album. It's the third album, and it's called All the Space That There Is. So I don't have that album in the shop yet, but I do have their first one, which is self-titled The Adobe Collective. I have it in vinyl and CD, and I have CDs of Take Heart, Take Care, which is also lovely. And I have to say, I got a preview copy, thank you, Tim, of the new album and it's wonderful my first impressions listening to it were it was reminiscent of the iteration of Fleetwood Mac kind of just after Peter Green left and Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks were getting on board so if you have an opportunity to pick that up please do and I may be carrying it soon in the shop I'll let you know for sure Kit Brooks was episode 74, and she's offering Bee Mama Bee Balm, which is a lip balm that she makes from all natural ingredients. And if you come down to the shop, you can pick those up. She, again, was episode number 74. And Kit was instrumental in getting Huel Hauser to come to Noah Purifoy's outdoor studio and get him on the California Gold show. So Google Noah Purifoy California Gold Huel Hauser. Just throw all those in the search box and I'm sure it'll come up and you'll see Kit on there too. She was actually in the episode kind of walking Huel around. In the book section, we have Twisted Tales from the Desert. Also, two other titles that are Twisted Tales takeoffs from Mary Collier, who was episode number 33. Mary's got a great selection of sci-fi. Just search Mary Collier on Amazon or marycollier.com, M-A-R-I-C-O-L-L-I-E-R. And if you like science fiction, go find Mary's books. And I think she just signed a contract for a new book that she's writing, which is pretty amazing. Wendy Gadzuk, who is episode 58, just presented her new tarot deck at La Matadora Gallery last month. And at the shop, we have prints and note cards with those prints and also music from her Bay Area band Andalusia Rose in album and CD. 
Decorating the walls very colorfully is the art of Cheryl Candell Jimson, who is episode number 116. Cheryl also has Stitch Art Studio. That's her business for many years. And she designs and stitches pillows, t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats. So if you need any of that kind of stuff, reach out to Cheryl. At the store, we have some beautiful, colorful paintings of indigenous plants, desert scenes, and some of those embroidered pillows. So come by and take a look at those if you're interested. Local photographer Sandra Gooden has two mandalas in the shop. The remainder of the mandalas are right now in the Yucca Valley Visual and Performing Arts Center because they were in last month's exhibition, which was Sandra's first time exhibiting at that kind of venue. So that was really exciting for her. So I'm excited to have two of her pieces in the shop. She's also going to be bringing in some matted prints of some local desert scenes. So I'm excited for you to see those when they come in. And if you want to listen to Sandra's episode, that was episode number 52. Additional books we're carrying in the shop are from Lauren Henley, who is on episode 54. Lauren is an award-winning poet, and I'm carrying three of her titles, Desert with a Cabin View, Starshine Road, and her most recent, Whole Night Through. Just before the holiday, Lauren and her husband, John, invited folks up to a local venue, and she had cast people in roles that are in the portions of the book, and they read them there out loud, and it was really wonderful. Another book by a local desert lady that we're carrying is Memory Dam, and it's by Annalise Kuyper, who was episode 83. She wrote this book drawing on stories from her own life that she would tell to students who came in on artist residencies with the Andrea Zetel group High Desert Test Sites. There are four books actually in the series. It's called the Scout Book Series, and all of them by female authors about their experiences here in the desert. When I had interviewed Annalise, she was talking about, I think she was still in the process of the editing of the book. She wasn't sure when it was going to come out. And it did come out in the fall, and I was able to go to a reading where she read one of the short stories from it. So if you get a chance to listen to the episode and pick up the book, it'll be a great combination. We also are carrying Kathleen Lowndes' book, Facing the Ultimate Fear, A New Future. Kathleen was interviewed on episode number 115 and talked about her recovery from brainstem surgery. And then we have Road to Soul by Carmen Mendoza, who was on episode 97. Her short stories are desert-themed, and some of them are a little racy. So if you're into that romance kind of thing, you might want to pick that one up. We also have The Adobes of 29 Palms from Pat Remington, who is on episode 41, and I think that winds up the book selection. If you're looking for some things to decorate your walls, I have some beautiful macrame pieces from Gabriella Nagy, who was on episode 17. Gabriella also is a local yoga teacher and plays the harmonium, and she really mixes the two beautifully. Jennifer Ruggiero was episode 67, and we've got some of her photography on the walls. She's also working on preparing some of her cabin transfers. If you listen to the episode, you'll know that she had a cabin out in Wonder Valley and spent quite a bit of time there photographing many of the other cabins that were out there. So I'm looking forward to that work coming in, and I hope you'll stop by and take a look. Linda Sibio was episode 53 and does some wonderful work in the world of mental illness and how that affects the economic status of people. And she created two t-shirt lines from some of her artwork. One is called Octa Root, and the designs represent the Buddhist eightfold noble path, right thought, right action, etc. And the other line is called Hip Madness, and they are designs depicting various personality disorders. Really interesting work. And she had them at the Hammer Museum along with some of her hats and scarves, I think. So I'm really happy to have those in the shop. And Hilary Sloan, who was episode number 22, in her episode, she told me about going to Tanzania and being a photographer for a nonprofit. Hillary's offering a nice desert print, as well as a selection of black and white desert scenes on greeting cards. So that's a pretty good selection of art, books, and music, all by local women from the area. And I am so proud to be able to put that out there. 
not only to people who are just visiting the area, but to people who live here as well. I'm hoping that this is a place where visitors and locals alike will find something for themselves or to gift to someone else. And with that in mind, I want you to know that there's a locals layaway program. So if you come into the shop and you see something you like, but it's just a bit out of range for an immediate purchase, we can work on that. If you're interested in that, just email me for the details or just stop in the shop and we'll talk about it. I do have some shout outs before I wrap up this shortened edition of Desert Lady Diaries. Marcella and Mark from Ventura, thanks so much for coming into Soul Connection. I hope to see you again soon. Francine K, Laura S, Valerie H, and Kathy Z, thank you so much for signing up for the weekly newsletter, or now I should say the bi-weekly newsletter. If you're listening and you haven't signed up for the newsletter, just go out to DesertLadyDiaries.com and click on what still says weekly newsletter, and you'll get a newsletter when a new episode is released, and now that'll be twice a month. And if you'd like to sign up for the Soul Connection newsletter that comes out once a month with things that will be happening at the shop and the surrounding area, just send an email to soulconnectionjt at gmail.com and please put newsletter in the subject line. And Josie M., thanks for stopping in. It was really, really great to meet you. I hope I get to see you again soon. For my Patreon supporters, as always, thank you so much for your support. There will be a special recording for you out there this week as well. If you're interested in becoming a patron of the Desert Lady Diaries podcast, go to DesertLadyDiaries.com and click on the Patreon button for details. I'll talk to you again on January 28th. Until then, thanks so much for listening.